I would now like to invite uh, Mr. Kamal Bali, the President and Managing Director for the Volvo Group India. It's such a pleasure to have you here with us uh, from India. Uh, you're also the Chairman for the Sweden-India Chamber of Commerce. Warm welcome, Mr. Bali. And uh, Arti Davis, uh, the Senior Vice President from Sweden-India Business Council. You will now have a fireside chat. Thank you, and great to have Kamal with us in person. We last met, I think, four days ago yes. in Bangalore, but with us today to discuss face-to-face. -face. It's, it's been a long time. But one thing additionally I want to mention, Kamal, in your introduction is you are also the chairperson for the Sweden-India Transport Innovation and Safety Partnership, something we're going to come to in our conversation today. But we've heard a lot today. You've yes. been with us since the morning, and we've been talking about the opportunities in India. Some of the challenges also about doing business, but we're coming out of Diwali. We've been in India now, lights everywhere to celebrate light over darkness, good over evil. And one could really argue that India is a shining light right now in the global economic landscape. We have over 7% growth, soon to be nine, I believe. So come on, tell us what's behind the story, what's behind the headlines, and is it most importantly sustainable? Yeah, thank you, thank you, uh, Sanju. Thank you, Arti, for having me, having me here. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning to everyone, different parts of the world. Uh, yeah, so Arti, coming to your question, uh, I can say that in my 41 years of career, is the first time I'm actually seeing India performing on ground. Uh, we, we always boasted of the potential India had, you know, huge potential, large, population, huge demographic dividend, but things were not really clicking the way uh, some of the other major uh, economic powers have done. But in the last seven to eight years, I can see India really uh, walking the talk. And number of things are happening behind the numbers which you are seeing. We see a huge uh, amount of uh, infrastructure push. Uh, I mean, we had a lot of structural reforms happening, uh, things like the, the new logistics policy, uh, the road highway, in the last four years, uh, almost 60,000 kilometers of national highways have been planned to be built, of, of which 32,000 kilometers have already been done. So that's one that's giving a lot of employment that is going to the bottom of the socio-economic pyramid when it comes to employment. The way India has handled COVID is remarkable. Nobody gave us a chance with 1.4 billion people that we would vaccinate 2 billion doses in such a short time. And our vaccine, which is really working, not a normal vaccine. So I think that, and that's too, with the help of AstraZeneca, which is again a Swedish company. So that was a great, great uh, thing. Then you see a lot of focus on sustainable growth. It's the growth which we are seeing is very inclusive today. Uh, and that is one. But, but I think more importantly, if you look at the commitment of the country to net zero, by 2070. If you look at our energy requirements, we used to be almost 70-80% thermal, which was coal, and only 20-30% to 30 uh, renewable energy. Today, we are at almost 40%, uh, and, and by 2050, we will be 80% of total 800 gigawatt power. By 2050, we would be almost 80% would be, would be uh, uh, renewable. So a huge... Uh, and, and all these actions to all these have already happened. It is not that it is on a plan, it's already happening on ground. So I see a lot of, a lot of uh, cultural and a mindset shift. I see these numbers are highly sustainable uh, because the elements which were challenging our growth are being addressed today. For instance, the infrastructure, the ease of doing business. We have thrown into the dustbin more than 2,000 archaic laws. We have one national single window scheme, which means that earlier you had to run from, uh, from pillar to post to get an approval to start a business, 40 different approvals. Now you file one application, all 40 get done. So we've really used the digital backbone and we have created India stack, uh, when it, whether it comes to FinTech, the payment stack, which is now one of the largest in the world, the GST regime, which is one of the largest in the world today, maybe the largest, Whereas one, 29 different states, like 29 different countries, all 
connected with GST, which is really bringing in a lot of efficiency in the logistics system. So I feel a number of initiatives I can go on and on. I think a lot of speakers in the morning have alluded to many things. But what I can say to you, I can confirm to all the audience here, is that it is happening on ground in India today. I think that's really important is that it's not just headlines. It's not just, it's headlines. Not just the media. Yeah, You're seeing it. Yeah. And I think we've experienced it. Of course, we were in this delegation last week with SIBC and we saw a huge response and a Absolutely. huge uptake Absolutely. in terms of working with new solutions. The reform package you've mentioned yes. has made a difference. 35 kilometers per day, I yes. believe. 40 kilometers per day yeah. is, the, is the balanced goal to get to 60,000 kilometers out of which 32,000 have been done. I'm saying even if they do 55, but it's a great job done. 60,000 kilometers and, and along this road are corridors of economic growth. And, and it's, it's a complete plan. And then there is, of course, something called as PM Gati Shakti Yojana, which is really uh, having different layers of information. Earlier, one thing used to get done in India and balance five things went bust. Today, when, when they create infrastructure, you see everything is done. Everything, the last, right to the last mile connectivity, is done. So I think that to me is really making a huge difference. And this is thanks to all collaborations. Collaborations of different kind uh, between people, between organizations, between countries. And I, I have to really talk about here with SIBC, we have the ISPLIT, uh, which is at the top leaders level. And then we have SciTech, which is um, um, entrepreneurship and technology partnerships network. And then there's the CITES network, you know, so which is for uh, safety and transport innovation. So I think these are the platforms to me, the platform way of working is going to be the, the future, the, the partnership and collaboration. And I, I think that's what I think we have realized. And I think this collaboration, the willingness to collaborate is yeah. also what pushes us forward because government on the one side, and I think Anish and Bhagbatra mentioned this quite well this morning, government can set the framework, but business has to be the enabler to actually make it heard and actually impactful. So let's talk about CITIS, Sweden, India, Transport Innovation and Safety Platform. 14 different partners across the tri triple helix collaboration industry, academia, government agencies, and Volvo and yourself sitting on the chairmanship of CITES. It's an amazing collaboration because you started right before the pandemic hit. We con connected, we were together in Stockholm on the side of the UN Road Safety Conference and inaugurated CITES with ministers on both sides. Right. And that was the last time we met right. as a corporation because we had COVID. But the team has been meeting every week and there are actions being taken. It would be great to hear your perspective on how this concrete bilateral collaboration has actually changed the roadmap. Absolutely. This is another true example of things happening on ground. I mean, uh, we started with this CITES collaboration or the platform, which is the true triple helix, as you mentioned, that the authorities, the industry, the academia, all of them participating in solving some compelling problems. I mean, uh, road safety has been a big, big issue for the entire world. And India, unfortunately, is the f fatality capital uh, of the world with 150,000 road-related deaths every year. So this was one very compelling purpose which we, which we picked up. And uh, 14 different partners from India and Sweden joined hands to find solutions. So we are working very hard. The first project is running very well. We are uh, planning to start the second project, which is on getting the data uh, on, on accidents and how we can help. Uh, so there's one central body to a repertoire of data. So I think that's something. So, but I'm very excited with the way organizations have worked uh, with a passion. What I see is the spirit of understanding. And I think what is behind all this is, is behind any good collaboration and network is, is basically the spirit of um, transparency, which leads to trust and trust leads to collaboration. So I think this is something very important that as long as we are transparent, we share every detail, we start trusting each other and then we start collaborating. And to my mind, that's the recipe for future success because no one organization, as Martin also pointed out in the morning, uh, can handle the, the complexities of this, this chaotic world uh, going forward. So you will need partners to really find solutions. And I think the era of partnerships, working with startups, working with large, small companies, authorities, and the society is going to be the way forward. 
I think you make a really good point because, of course, in December, we come together across the Sweden-India corridor with the India-Sweden Business Leaders Roundtable, where CEOs will sit together and the working groups to discuss what is the way forward. We live in an unstable world right now. We could say we're seeing regionalization right. of work being done in supply chains. And it's really important that stakeholders and, and leaders like yourself push the way forward to say collaboration is key. Partnerships like CITIS, of course, are role models for how to move forward. But most important is the willingness to act. Absolutely. I, I think, and that, that's the key because the, the challenges of sustainability are humongous. I mean, we, we alone cannot solve them. And the good news here is that the emerging technologies are providing a lot of solutions to, to, to take up some of the sustainability challenges. So therefore, it's great if we all can work as a team, as partners in collaboration. And I can tell you that uh, the future is really about collaborations and not about competition. I mean, I think the word, we were always obsessed with the word competition. I think that will change to collaboration. From competition to collaboration is going to be the key. Thank you so much, Kamal, for being with us today and being a critical supporter to initiatives like this to create that collaboration, those frameworks, and being a stakeholder in a map of where we want to be by 2030, 2050, and 2070. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.